Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I built this 4 foot wide, 36 inch tall little console. It's super cute. Stick around. As usual, I'll put all the materials in the description below, but this project really just calls for some project panels from Lowe's and some 2x3s. I have a 16 inch deep by 4 foot wide project panel and then a 3 foot tall 12 inch wide project panels in the back. I start by cutting the legs down to 35 and a quarter inch long because the total piece will be 36 inches tall. Okay, so I've got both my two by threes cut for each side. So four two by threes cut at 35 and a quarter inches long. And one of the things I wanted to point out, I'll put my project panel in between and I'll probably use it this way. Um, but I like the sides to not be the entire length of the leg. So I like them to sit a little higher. I think it makes it look a little more decorative, adds to the leg and the design. So I will cut this project panel about an inch and a half shorter than the leg itself. Okay, now I have the leg pieces and the paneling all cut to size. This is a three quarter inch piece here. I think I talked about that earlier. And I will attach a two by three to each side. And the way I'm gonna do that is by using pocket holes. I have a Craig jig system, a K4, looks like this. And this will drill in little holes here that will allow me to put a screw in at an angle and attach the stud legs to this piece. Um, one of the things I really love about this Craig jig system is it takes a lot of the guesswork out. If you line up this portion of your Craig jig here to three quarters of an inch, because that's how thick my piece is, you don't have to worry about depth. It calculates that for you, which I love, just depending on the thickness of your piece. And then you line your drill bit up here with this grid here on this side as well, and that calculates all of that for you. If you are a beginner woodworker, you need to have this in your arsenal. Pocket holes are huge. They do a lot for you. They can open up what you're able to build a ton. I also have a tutorial on how to use it. I don't know which side ever. It'll pop up one of these sides and you could go check that out too. Okay, I should also mention that I'm gonna be using one and a quarter inch Craig jig screws and I'm also going to be using one and a half inch Craig jig screws because my legs are one and a half inches thick I'm going to go on that portion of the build with a little longer of a screw the one and a half inch and then I always use type on glue no matter what it is in my build this has been the best glue I've tried a lot of other brands my favorite type on I don't have a huge workbench right now, so I'm working on the ground, but that's just how I roll. Um, so I don't want my paneling right here to be right up flush with the edge. I like to have a little bit of a lip or depth, or I feel like it gives it a little more of a decorative edge. So I'm gonna use these two scrap pieces, and they're gonna go right along the inside here. just enough when I attach these pieces I've got a little space there so I'm gonna take my one and a half inch screws I'm gonna put some glue there and I'm just gonna attach the legs now Okay, you guys, I have my panels all put together here. 
they're looking great and now it's time to cut my cross pieces so that I can finish the assembly process. Now I wanted a little overhang on the top piece when I put that down so I've accounted for that in my measurements as well and I'm going to cut the cross pieces at 41 inches wide. I'm going to need four of those because I will need two at the top and two at the base. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those now and I'm going to pocket hold them. That's how I'm going to join the pieces. So I'll get those cut and pocket hold and assemble the rest of the carcass. Okay, so because these pieces are two bys, that means they're one and a half inches thick, and I'm gonna have to adjust my Craig jig to that thickness right there, which is super simple. Unscrew this little brass nut, and then there's kids outside playing. And then you'll go to about one and a half inches. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> one and a half inches right there. You lock your brass nut back in place. And that is set. Now I just need to set my drill bit to the correct dimension here and I'll be ready to go. Before I adjusted my Craig jig, I decided to finish putting the pocket holes in the rest of the project panels that would go across the bottom, the middle, and the top of the console. I did this by putting two pocket holes on all four sides and I did them on the bottom so that they won't be seen when the console is open or being used. Then I adjusted my Craig jig for the 2 by material and I put two pocket holes at each end of the cross pieces. Next I attached the cross pieces to the side panels with a little dab of glue and then the 2 inch pocket hole screws. I've also found that it's then easier to attach the bottom project panel before the other side. I also do the middle shelf in this video. I would not recommend that. If I had to do it again, I'd attach the other side first because I don't have a cross piece for the middle panel and it was hard to keep it square. Then you can stand your piece up and finish pocket holing the top cross pieces. And then I laid it back down and just finished putting the screws in that bottom panel. And that's it, there's the top. And here is where we are at now. That simple. So these base pieces I like to pocket hole along the side and a couple in the middle and on this side and for the shelf it looks crooked on here but it's actually not in real life. <laughs> there will be I'm gonna add one more 2 by 3 right here and it will screw into the 2 by 3 as well and then I'll put two doors right there and right there. We're just about done and it's looking good. Okay, now to move on to the doors. I grabbed these trim pieces from Lowe's and two more project panels. These project panels are 20 inches wide by four feet tall, and they're what I'm gonna make the doors out of. First off, I need to add a two by three down the very middle of the carcass. This will split the two doors. Next, when you get your Craig jig, you will have two sizes of bits that work with your Craig jig screws. I needed the small one to fit into this space. Then I took my 20 inch project panels and measured the holes where the doors needed to be. The holes were about 19 inches, so I needed to rip down these boards just a little bit. Then they fit. You wanna allow an eighth of an inch all the way around the door so that it can swing open and swing closed. So on your measurements, make sure you have a quarter of an inch play. Hey you guys, so I'm getting ready to route out a design on the console table on the top and on the doors probably because my customer wants this table to have this look. And in order to achieve that look, I'm gonna use my router and a V-groove bit to kind of make it look like shiplap. It's a faux shiplap and it's just set. Here's my V-groove bit and it's set at 1 32nd. So it's just barely, gonna cut into the piece. And I've used this a couple times, like on my barn door here, and on a couple other projects, it's like my faux shiplap setting, and I love to use this technique. If you're interested on how to use a router though, you can check out my video here. I'll make sure and pop that in, or here. It kind of goes over router basics and what to do with a router, how to use a router, etc. But I'm gonna use it today to create that faux shiplap look on the top of this console. 
Don't forget your safety protection, your mask, eyewear, and get your hair out and for your face. So my customer wants the doors on this piece to have a Z front, which is gonna be pretty simple. I bought these 3 8 inch pieces from Lowe's and they're by four feet long. And let's see if I can turn it down. Basically to make the Z, you cut one straight piece across the front and then glue and nail that. Then I'll cut a 45 like this and then I'll add one to the bottom and that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark and cut this piece and the bottom piece, and then I'll work on the Z's. And I need to do two doors. So I'm gonna do the top and, I try to do it in chunks. So I'm gonna do the top and bottom, top and bottom, and then I'll do the cross pieces right after that. Okay, so each door is going to be going away from it, and these are just simple parallel 45 cuts. I set my saw up to 45 degrees, made the cut, marked where it needed to be cut at the other side at 45, and made that cut. It was super simple, easy to do. Okay, I'm gonna be staining with Minwax Stain, which is my go-to. My customer um, opted for Jocko Bean. She has a table that I built her about a year or two ago, and it's stained Jocko Bean as well. I'm gonna be using these Gorilla Grip gloves. I've talked about these before. These are machine washable and reusable, and I love them. They're neoprene, I believe. I'm looking to see. I wear small, but I love them because I can stain and then put them away and use them again. I don't have to throw them away. So they're great for the environment and my pocketbook, which I've said before, um, but I really like them. So I'm gonna use them to stain and a little cloth that I have. I'm gonna get everything stained up. She's also ordered some shelves, so I've got those here. Those do not have to do with the console, so don't worry. But I'll stain these up and then it's attached doors and we're done.
Now it's time to attach the door hinges and hardware. I found these at Lowe's. These are pretty inexpensive and I like the way they look. So you're gonna wanna make sure you drill out where the screws go in so that you don't have any splitting in the wood. So I've already drilled out these holes earlier and now I'm just screwing in the hinges. Then I'll take them over to the console and do the same thing to attach. A little tip to attaching cabinet doors, or any doors for that matter, is to use playing cards um, to sit underneath so that it lifts up about an eighth of an inch. I didn't have any playing cards on me, so instead I'm using sandpaper rounds. I place them under the bottom of the cabinet door, and then I will just screw the hinges in, and that should give me enough clearance for the door to open and shut. All right, so I got everything stained and the doors are ready to be attached. I use these little style selection magnets um, to help the doors close and stay closed firmly. And they look like this. They're a little magnet and then you have this little metal plate that attaches to the door. This is inside the cabinet and they go together. And it kind of just helps the cabinet stay closed. Most of cabinetry has something like this, if you look at them, professionally made. And these are like a dollar at Lowe's. So I grabbed these for the doors. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. And then I grabbed these little knobs because I think they're adorable. And I'm just gonna attach these little knobs which match the hardware I used for the hinges. They're the same brand and the same color. So the knobs will go on, the magnets will go on, and I'll clear coat it and we'll be done. Okay, so to attach these magnets, hopefully you can hear me, it's pretty simple. This is the magnet piece and this is the piece that I'm gonna attach to the bottom here. And then I'll attach the metal plate to the bottom of the door. I'll show you how I do it. So for these door magnets, I place them at the bottom and then I close the cabinet door to position them right where I want them to be. And from this point, it comes with all the screws and everything you need. You'll just screw it directly into the base. And luckily, there's little grooves on each side of the magnet so that you can adjust them if you need to. But I don't usually need to. And then you can attach this little metal plate on the back side of the door right at the same position as the magnet. And just like that. Now this is actually closing not far enough in so I'm gonna move the magnetic portion back just a smidge and on there there is room so I don't have to pull the screw all the way out. I can just lift them a little bit and then re-secure them and there we go. Much better. Now I had to adjust my door a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and stain this portion back up. And a lot of times these standard knobs come with two different size screws. So just pull out one screw and check to make sure it's the correct depth. I had to go with the longer screw for these knobs since I had two pieces of wood laminated together and then you just get a drill bit figure out the placement of your handle drill all the way through and pull the screw through from the back and attach the knob
And once the handles are attached, that's it. Then you can seal up your piece and put the backing on. The very last thing I forgot to include and I almost forgot and was gonna leave it out of the video is the backing of the console. So last piece, I leave it till the end because I like to be able to reach in to get all of the other um, attachments on and hardware on. And so it's the very last piece that I put on. And you can grab this eighth inch piece from Home Depot. It's about five bucks and it's two by four, two feet by four feet. If you have a piece that's bigger, then you're gonna need to get multiple pieces to cover the space. And obviously if you have one that's smaller, you're gonna need to cut it down. In my instance, this is a taller console. It's about 36 inches tall. The normal is about 31 inches. So I got two pieces and I'm gonna cut them to go across the back here. So, and this MDF board is really nice. It's a really smooth, it's a cabinet backing. So it's really smooth on one side and then you can see the MDF on the other side. So obviously the smooth side will go facing in to the cabinet and that's it. And that's it, this beginner cabinet is all done and complete. You can use a poly seal on top or whatever your favorite sealant is, and you're done. Thanks so much for stopping by and building this with me today. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. You can also come over and visit me on Instagram, TikTok, or at my website at eternalharvestdecor.com. Thanks so much.